Brentford two, Chelsea two. Yeah. There were chants mm. in the away. Oh well, there was a banner in the away end. Uh, I'm gonna gonna read it out here. I don't want your shirt. I want you to fight for ours. Mm. Agree. It's tough. Um, there's a stick to beat Chelsea with in terms of the amount of money that we spent, and that's undeniable. And if you spent that much money, you shouldn't be a bottom and half table team. That's what Chelsea are right now. And there needs to be an, uh, an acceptance from Chelsea fans. Last season finished 12th. This season we're comfortably mid table. We are a mid table team. And so those Chelsea fans that are saying potch out, I understand it. But who do you think is going to come in? I'm hearing people say Simone Nzagi, who's top of the league at Inter Milan. Why the hell is he going to come to Chelsea, who are mid table right now? There needs to be a, an acceptance of the reality, and he can move forward as a fan base. I think Arsenal went through a similar thing, or Liverpool and their doldrums went through a similar thing. You knew where you were. So at the beginning of the season, there's not chats about top four, maybe a title race. You know that you're not that team. But I think if you juxtapose the position of the table to the money spent, people expecting success and silverware. And what Chelsea did a really good job of in the Roman Brambridge era is papering over the cracks. If you think about the Sarri season, which was viewed as a disaster, you win the Europa League. You think about the season Benitez comes in, we win the Europa League. You think about some season that uh, Goose Hidden comes in, we win the uh, Carabao Cup. So Chelsea have always papered over the cracks. In recent years, we haven't done that. In this year, when we got to the League Cup final, a previous iteration of Chelsea would have won that, and then this season looks like a good season. But it's not. And so the game against Brentford was just symptomatic of where we're at at the moment as a team. No Chelsea fan would have gone to that game fully confident they were going to beat Brentford. Stamford Bridge has been a playground for Brentford in recent years. Like, we are not a team that expects to roll over teams like Brentford week after week because we're not that good. And I don't know what the solution is. Um, we saw Nicholas Jackson get on the score sheet, which was great, but we saw some terrible defensive errors from Chelsea yet again. And when you're going up against a team like Brentford who are struggling at near the foot of the table and they are matching you man for man or midweek against Leeds where Leeds look like the better side in the second half, that tells you where you're at. So let's be realistic about the situation. Chelsea are not in a great space right now and things need to change for me at the board level. OK, but you've said that they were mid-table last season and mm -hmm. it was poor and Graham Potter lost his job for that, right? Mauricio Pochettino comes in, another load of money spent there's no doubt that there's talent in that group yeah. and Chelsea are not any better. Yeah. So at what point does Maurizio Pochettino have to take responsibility for the fact that he's supposedly come in as the superior coach, mm -hmm. yet we don't see that translating into results and a league position? I can com like completely understand your point of view there. But as a Chelsea fan, I've seen so many so many managers come and go, I ain't got another one in me. Like I'm just I'm just gonna ride this one out. I've got nothing, <laughs> I've got nothing left. Like when's it gonna we, end? We, we sat Pochettino and then you guys give me the options. You guys love football. What manager did Chelsea bring in for the sack motion? Exactly Pochettino? the same situation as with United as well. Too cool. But take too cool back. No, but but but, yeah, but look at us, who would have thought? <laughs> Not me. No, but do you know what? You made a very good point about who comes in and replaces him and, and sort of this idea of fantasy world of the Simeone is in Zaghi's or even Simeone uh, for them out like all these top class coaches it's not that Chelsea it's anymore that where Chelsea. Roman used to just wave a check and all these big coaches would come so the difference being in, our, in answer to your question I know you didn't ask me sorry Harry I'm getting pressing again that's no, alright but um, sure. I think they have to persevere a bit more with Poch because in my opinion Chelsea fans won't like this but I think he's their last big name coach that, and one of the best coaches out there that they can attract. But after after Pochettino, I personally don't think there's an aspiring top quality coach that would want to walk into Chelsea right now. You say goodbye to Nagelsmann. That's not, just my not, opinion. We're not in that realm anymore. We don't no. have European football. It'll be a second consecutive year that we don't qualify there you Europe go. in the league position. So we, therefore, we, you've got to persevere you, with you got to, because otherwise you're looking at managers that are playing the trade in the championship right now or playing the trade in the Midland European leagues. Chelsea are not that side and it hurts me to say it because two and a half years ago we won the Champions League but realistically when you've gone through what Chelsea have gone through in terms of sanction in terms of change of ownership in terms of the turnover of players and it hasn't worked out then you have what you have otherwise right it's now. going to be a project manager like the final one that was linked with was it linked with you guys slot uh, no yeah. sorry Spurs Arnie Arnie yeah. Arnie someone like that do you know what I mean like a project hmm. are Chelsea really like, a patient on a project it's, it's, it's difficult really because like the, the comparison that people make is oh look at Unai Emery went into Villa and he made an impact straight away or look at Ange he's gone into Tottenham and he's made an impact straight away like I'm not being funny they're talking about like having great seasons they're fourth and fifth Tottenham are fifth man and everyone's having like oh Ange is a miracle worker they're fifth in the league but, but does that Ch tell the whole Chelsea story Chelsea and Man United are a completely different stratosphere 
completely different. But but does that tell the whole story in terms of the position? Because I think one thing Tottenham fans would say is they've all bought in to what the manager's trying to do. It doesn't matter about the results. It doesn't matter how they're going to play. You saw it in that Chelsea game at White Hart Lane. We all knew that they were going to play the exact same way. I don't think, and correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think United fans really know how they're going to play under Ten Hag. And I don't think Chelsea fans are completely bought into the style of play under Poch. Whereas the Spurs fans so are completely much more bought going into the way on they're playing. The, 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 those managers, though. There's so much more going on. Yeah, but the manager is the face of it. And the manager needs to, I've said this a million and one times about Pochettino, a manager needs to inspire you. A manager needs to give you something that makes you want to follow him. It's like having a, you know, if you want to get your dog to come out of the living room and go into the garden, you pick up a tree, you dangle it, the dog follows you and you walk out the door and the dog will follow you because there's something there that they want and that they yeah. believe. Let, let me ask you but, this question then, right? Yeah. Would you both say that United and Tottenham, United and Chelsea have better squads than Spurs? And therefore, no. do you think Ange will go into either of those clubs and in- instantly make the impact he's made at Spurs? I think, no, but the thing I'd say with that, Scott, that's top, Tottenham's best 11 is, is a good team, I think, and a good enough team to, to push for, for top four. I don't think their squad as a whole in terms of their squad de- mm. depth is particularly great. The issue you've got at Chelsea is that like players mm. like Moises Caicedo, who were battling out for a signature with Liverpool, if he goes to Liverpool, we're talking about one of the best DMs in the league. And we're just saying that. like He goes straight in there. You have Caicedo, you have Sabozlai, and you have McAllister, whoever else you want to play in that midfield. And we're saying he's great. The problem with Chelsea is that we've got so many players, like Malo Gusto, for example. If he goes to a top team like Arsenal, he goes to Liverpool, he goes to City, he's a great right back and he's playing well for Chelsea. There's so many players, Enzo Fernandez, off the back of being young player of the tournament at the World Cup, winning the World Cup. If he goes to a top team with a proper manager, he's a success. And so to play devil's advocate, I do think we should stick with Poch, but we have seen transformative effects when when top managers come in. Think about the noise about Enoch out or whatever. That's very, very quiet right now because Andrew's doing a good job. I saw Arsenal fans storming the streets of North London saying, get the Cronkies out. And I saw an article about a year later saying the Cronkies are the best owners in sport. Managers can paper over the cracks. FSG out. Uh, that noise was so loud. Klopp comes in, quiets that noise because he's a transformative manager. So there are cases in point where at Man United, Alex Ferguson paid with those cracks for years. There were problems with the Glazers for years, but you had a great manager that kind of brought that team out of it. I think that Chelsea, unless you can find that man, you have to persevere with Poch. But I can understand why there's a group of football fans that are like, wasn't Poch supposed to be that guy? But do you persevere with a coach that's, that's failing? Well, the, the thing is, is that Pochettino, during his time in England, did well to get Spurs into the top four regularly, went to a Champions League final, which he lost. But other than that, he isn't this elite coach. So when people say, you know, is this is the last elite coach that Spurs, can, uh, that I beg your pardon, that Chelsea can get, I don't even think they've got an elite coach now. And so I think they're at that point now where you should be trying to, you should be forgetting about that. I agree with you that the expectation is not the same. Yeah. But I, where I slightly disagree is that Chelsea Football Club has no pull. Like, it's still a London club, which is massive for people that are coming into this country. Um, that, that, that's a big factor. They still clearly spend a lot of money and will continue to do so while Todd Bowley's in charge. Okay, they've got a talented group of players. You know, I I think that if I were a manager at the top of the Dutch league, the Portuguese league and Chelsea came knocking, regardless of their current situation, I would be interested. The one manager that's been mentioned in the live chat is Ruben Amarim. Uh, at Sporting Lisbon oh, as someone really who they think funny, would be what, would be a good fit. Yeah, like, yeah, we'll but about is that is that well, can you can you say what he's achieved? I mean, we look at someone like Ange. I mean, that's no disrespect to him, but at Celtic, made his name in Japan, Australian national coach, and he's yeah. come in and done. Th- really this well. is the thing we have to get out of of what has he achieved because Arteta did nothing and still hasn't achieved but, major things at Arsenal. But the improvement but is what, massive. What 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 my point is is what like tangible proof do you have yeah. that he is a better manager than Pochettino who's had a, now has a year under his belt? There, there is a, you there don't is, have there any. Is what does you're Poch spending have? money to sack Poch and bring this guy what, in. What does Poch have? Well, 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 Poch has four years or five years experience how long is at Spurs and the remit would have been very similar. So it's Poch's first year at Spurs they don't finish in the top four and then every year after that by the year that he got sacked they finish in the top four. I'm sure that Chelsea fans would have absolutely loved Poch to come in and do that same job. We're not, we know we're not the same Chelsea. I just want to see us compete. We don't compete anymore. A game against Brentford 2-2, it, I, can, I don't blame Chelsea fans for not watching that game because you just know how it's going to go. But like, to, to 
be linked with managers that haven't got the pedigree of Pochettino. I think we're just fighting and losing battle. And we're going down the same but road. Pe- that... po- Pochettino doesn't have pedigree. This is my point. Neither does board. Like... Neither does this board. This board has no money in the bank. They have no pedigree. We have no faith that they can go and identify a top manager. They told us that Graham Potter was the guy. They sacked Tuchel, who finished third and got to two cup finals and brought in Graham Potter. This board does not have any pedigree or any credit in the bank to say that they know what they're doing when they're identifying managers. Pochettino has told them clearly, I like Conor Gallagher. They're consistently trying to sell him. If you're a manager, well, you're going to be consistently undermined by the board. What manager wants that unless you're an aspiring manager that's going to be happy to take the job, which Potter was, and we saw how that I think out. next year they actually may not have credit in the bank if financial fair play comes into yeah. the game. For sure. <laughs> but, and but it, it comes into the pool as well. Like, what player is going to want to sign one of those death row contracts this is or an eight year deal and a it's team major. that doesn't have a proper manager? It's like, major. Chelsea right now are in the mud, and I'm very, very worried because a team like Manchester United have got the, the gloss and the, the aura where Man United will have a terrible season, but the lowest they will finish is seventh or eighth, lowest the main night will ever finish. Chelsea, I can see in a bad season, finishing 14th or 15th and things getting really, really bad. So it remains to be seen. I know we didn't talk about the game much at all. That's There's good. not much to talk about the game. Johan Vista tried about Mate. three overhead kicks. He scored one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations to him. He's probably, probably got gold. Congratulations. But, but for, for what Chelsea have got going on right now, it's just, it's. Um. I don't see anything tangible to hold on to. And me, like I said at the beginning of the video, I'm emotionally detached right now. I know I sound very emotional, but I'm done with it I until I see some progress. I personally think Poch is gone, guys. I genuinely think that. I, th- I don't think. What he, before the end of the season? No, no, I don't think he starts the next season. Really? Yeah, I don't think he starts. Next Who do you season. think comes in? Like you guys? I think Amarim. Really? Yeah. It's, I'm not even like making a case for Amarim specifically. I, I just, I just, I, I'm not going to judge it on what they've done before or whatever. And I know you need that to a degree to figure out if you want to hire someone. Yeah. But I just look at the team last year and I compare it to this year. And is it any better? And the truth is. That it's not, and somebody like Pochettino who should have had some, should have had some. There should influence. have been something. There should have been something that I'm looking at. Maybe Chelsea are defensively better. They're not. not Maybe not Chelsea not. are better going forward. They're not. Maybe Chelsea have got a better mentality. They don't. No, but do, like, do, I, I just I, there's nothing. There, there is there is nothing no, for me. And in this age of where we're at now, with social media judging every single development that every player makes, every single decision every player makes on every in every match, if they miscontrol something, it's that that player is awful. Like. We're in such a different era now. We have completely lost the aspect of giving managers time. We compl- yeah. We've completely lost it. And I'm completely with you. I don't. I think the problem at Chelsea, and I said this at the time when we, when we got all that stick around like 13 months ago, they spent all this money and their poor Graham Potter's just sat there thinking, what the bloody hell do I have to do with this? And then he ends up losing his job. Like, I think Chelsea will be lucky to find a manager who repeats the kind of success or the, the kind of form that Ange is showing at Tottenham. Like, Chelsea's mess is on the pitch at the moment, but it's the result of it from what's happening off it. I agree like, with that. And it's the same at United. I agree with that. But then I think you're looking at it through the same lens that you look at Ten Hag, where, in my opinion, you excuse him for stuff I'm that not he gets it. wrong. I'm saying that there's very, very, upstairs. you have to get and very lucky to find a manager who can do that. Well, you're not doing the same thing in our t- second season when you finish eighth again. No, no, this but is the point. This is the point. I know, he because, always shakes his head. No, it's like, is, is any different? No, it's it no is. Difference. It's very different. It's very <laughs> different. Because at least, and, and it might be a small thing to hold on to. I think. But at least when Arteta came in and he sat down and he spoke about this and that and highlighted all the problems that he thought there were in the team and in the club, you went, okay, it's not going to get fixed overnight, but I know that he knows what the problem is. So I'm confident that with the time, he will well, find it. Maybe, Pochettino have you considered there, that I think the same thing about Ten Hag? But Ten Hag doesn't do that. In Ten, your opinion. Ten Hag never comes out. Do you out. watch every th- single yeah, thing Ten Hag, he says? As ten, it, would, it would make all the headlines no, no, if he no, did. No, 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 but I, I do understand because like you have that, you take that solace because you're an Arsenal fan who reads absolutely everything into yeah, Arsenal. Totally. But like, from the outside the point of view, I was like, what, this guy finished eighth and then eighth so, and then fifth. Like, he should be gone if he doesn't finish the top so five. Can he, I, he finished so one can I speak season as a neutral, eight, Harry, the, second, if, the first if, season, he came in at the end of December. But I think, but I think, I'm going to vouch for Harry and I'm not an Arsenal fan and I hate them right now. The fan base sent out really hope they finish third but I think I'm Just with Harry necessary. I'm with Harry and because and I tell you what, from a personal point of view personal experience you know we've spoken about we've spoken about better defensively better mentality attitude of players um, the whole uh, what's the word I'm looking for environment footballing environment culture they came to Liverpool about three seasons ago and the usual we battered them 3-1 or 4-1 in the end I think it was the left back Nuno Tavares where he lost his head that game right and I turned around and I said to Arsenal fans afterwards I said 
I think I've, I've, se- I've seen something in this Arsenal team. I saw a method of play. It didn't work until an individual error cost him. But a directness, a play. We know how he's dealt with the star players, the gutted out players, problem players. We're not seeing that at Chelsea. And, and I agree, it's from the top. He was given, the board trusted him. I agree. The board, are, I don't know if they're trusting um, Pochettino or, or Ten Hag. They're the vision. But, but, they're they're vision. But, 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 but he obviously convinced them mm. to trust him. And, and, it's, and, it's, and, really con- it's really interesting that the two fans of clubs that have given their managers time and they're now better off for it are saying to the two, yeah, but, to the but two guys who are asking for their managers to have time no, that no, you're no, wrong. No, 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 we both wait. say we're both saying the same thing. But along the way we both saw things from those managers no. that gave us something oh, to did hope. You not I've seen from Ten Hag last season when he won the League Cup and finished third. No, Didn't see it. I know. Well then I, I, I think that's I, I think that is no, because not disingenuous you, you but guys, that's not that's not listen, fair because Tottenham had a disaster of a season last yeah, year, yeah? yeah. You guys had a car crash of a season and Liverpool had a car you crash. You can't diminish winning the trophy because part of what bought our test of time was winning that FA Cup in that yeah, first agreed, season. But but then you still go, but he finished eighth and eighth because yeah. that's the bit that you remember. You, yeah, don't, yeah, yeah. you haven't even mentioned the FA Cup yeah, yeah, because yeah. in your mind, it's the eighth place. So it goes to show that winning oh. those cups is great on the day, but nobody's going to really go back and... The three most successful clubs in this country are the three teams that have given the managers the most time. Surely there's a correlation between giving managers time and being successful. If you're going to sack a manager straight away, there's no chance for him to be successful. And Chelsea, what I will say as well, is the progress that I've seen, sorry, is the... (laughs) (laughs) No, 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 no. no. Is the progress I've seen is in the big games. In the games against you, the first game of the season, Chelsea looked very good. Against Man City, home and away, haven't lost. Against you at our place, threw it away, but looked good. We've improved... In the cup final, I know you had your kids out, but... In the big games against the best teams in the country, we compete consistently. Smash Burns. That's on. fine. So that means you do see something. Yeah. No, but that, that, exactly. That's, that's fine. If you if that's what you've seen in Pochettino in rise to the big games, and to be honest with him, Pochettino used to have a record of that in whilst at Spurs as well. Yeah. So he's continuing that legacy of rising up to the big games. That's fine. But what I'm saying is, me as a neutral, and I'm not an Arsenal fan, and I'm not, and I agree. And I remember I said Pochettino should be given more time. Right? I don't think he will be, but I think he should be. I, as, as a neutral watching Arsenal, I saw patterns of play in yeah. early days. Yeah. The, you know, the, his pressing, the energy he instilled in the team. And it was, and they were used to, and you're right, they finished 8 8 fifth, but I thought they're going somewhere. I don't see United going anywhere with the patterns of play, with the stylistically, mentally, and maybe that is a board issue. They're not trusting him with it. If, the, if the, they, the, if the they trust you guys overlook all the time is Klopp had his, his squad and he cleared out an entirety of players. Almost. Arteta had a squad that he didn't want. They cleared out an entirety of players. Scott. Chelsea did that last year. United haven't done it. But Scott, along Scott, the Harry, way. Scott, Harry, Scott, along the Scott, way. You didn't have to deal I with could, all guys, the issues. Guys, oh, I, honestly. I, I, I guys, <laughs> I can name the last word here. <laughs> so very quickly, I can name five, six players of that first initial squad that Klopp improved. Can you say the same for Ten Hag? Can you say the name for Pochettino? Individual, you could poor players. The same Ten, poor players. Ten Hag in this first season didn't really have a striker. Marcus Rashford was banging in goal. Like he was making... Name me two players he's improved. Who? Ten, uh, Pochettino. Ten Hag. Or to, uh, you can ask it depends on what time, what time frame you look at. Like at the moment... The you time referenced, been at the you club. referenced Klopp's early years. Diogo Dallo, I'll give you one. Diogo Dallo. Diogo Dallo, I'll take that. I'm trying to think of the others now. Yeah, I'll take Diogo Dallo. But I think Garnacho. Diogo Dallo's a good player. Kobe Mainu he's brought through. Like these players, yeah, true. he's taught them like how to live in this like circus of a football club. I just think there's, there's, there's an argument to be made. I'm happy for him to continue. On that table I'm happy for him to and continue. You, and you guys are like are supporting teams that are flying right now, yeah. but you've given your managers time. I don't see the benefit of sacking the manager as I soon as agree. things go wrong. I agree. I agree. I think Pochettino should be given time. Yeah, but you don't think Ten Hag should? No, I'd love it. <laughs> but, but I'm saying, but from a footballing point of view, I don't see any improvement or anything. That's the why I'm saying with Ten Hag. I haven't seen anything from any of them to say that if I had the keys to those football clubs, I'd be going into another summer saying, go and do, get what you want, get what you need. Great chat. I just, I just yeah. don't see it. And then the answer is, let's just go grab this other manager from this random place and then think, oh, he, he might be able to fix it. And you take that risk again and waste a whole load of money. What a pleasure that was. <laughs> I honestly, just sitting back as a neutral, just enjoying that. We didn't even plan to have two sides of the court on each side of the uh, table. It's just how um, it is. Yeah, yeah, Scott, Quakey, Harry, Chris, what a pleasure.